Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, podcasts, book clubs, celebrity interviews, possibly even more. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by The Stitch TV Show Shop, and you can find digital quilt patterns, branded show merchandise like t-shirts, mugs, laser cut applique kits, and more. <gasps> more. More. <laughs> today we're going to be talking about a big stitch quilting and sampler quilts, and we're joined by Pam's Quilt Lemonade. I'm sorry, I just like flashback to Eddie Murphy, Lemonade. I'm that really shows how old we are because the current reference for Lemonade is Beyonce. Yeah, no. And this was That's post Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy. pre-Beyonce. Yes, this is in the middle. Because I had apparently gone through a phase of uh, collecting a lot of lemon fabrics. <laughs> As you do, because sometimes you need lemon fabrics. For no reason. Yes, I'm exactly. just like, there's a lot of lemon fabrics. I feel like that's, I should get them. I think that's true with any motif. I'm like, oh, I need, you know, whatever. Like, I know people who are, like, all about the coffee motif. It's true. We know those people. Those people might be in the room with us. They might be. <laughs> I don't have a lot of coffee fabric, but, because I don't drink coffee. This is not coffee. Anyway. It's, like, it's a lick of drink. <laughs> just kidding. It's water. That looks like vodka. It's just kidding. It's tea. <laughs> that looks like whiskey. Is it, is it tea? Bourbon. I'm from Kentucky. What? It's bourbon. Hmm. <laughs> this has escalated quickly. <laughs> So, <laughs> it is not bourbon, let me, it's tea. Let me wait to crack another joke till you got liquid in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because I'm really good at spit takes. Huzzah. So, Huzzah. Uh, what's been up? What's been up? We have, we, okay, so Pam and I try to do this pretty, I mean, at least a couple of times a year. We try to take a class together because one of our we're guilds, hilarious. and <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> but one of our guilds. Um, brings in national teachers, so we get to take classes together if she is a free Saturday and I do. And I, as we don't hang out every day together. We really don't. No, we don't. So, but we got to take Christy Fincher's class together. Yes. And we made... A thing. A thing. We made a much smaller thing than she intended us to make. <laughs> but we joined forces. Da-da-da. Combined Wait. our quilt blocks. So this one's mine. Yes. And this one was mine. And we can't tell who did which one of these. Well, yes, we don't know. We have no idea. I appliqued them. Yes, but I did a lot of the gluing. She did all the gluing. The stitchings. Actually, this one's mine. Oh, yeah. Because I put the, you did the, thingies. the thingies in the middle. Hmm. I planned it. Anyway. I planned the thingies in the middle. So Christy's class, it was her stellar star sampler. And then this is supposed to be the finale block, which we got early secret access to. Don't tell. Which is foundation piece. It's foundation piece. So it's foundation piecing. But uh, uh, we each did each four sections, but Pam actually sewed the four sections together and I was doing the applique while she was doing the four sections. Because I didn't want to bring my 40 pound Janome with me to class. Right. And my travel machine, <laughs> I can do a zigzag on. So anyway, that was great fun. One, what a wonderful, fun, great teacher. Mm -hmm. If okay. you guys have a chance to take a class from Christy Fincher, please do. It is worth all your time. And she's super, super smart. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. We we were lucky we got to go have lunch with her, or dinner with her after the class, and it was so fun. Like, honestly, what, we sat there for three hours? Yeah, I, I checked least. my watch. I'm like, well, it's been three hours. <laughs> so we were like, we've been talking for three hours, but super nice to us, um, way fun, su lots and lots and lots of tips, mm -hmm. lots of tips, foundation piecing and applique. And literal tips, like glue tips. Right. <laughs> <laughs> tips you can hold in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of her technique is adopted from her mother's technique, which mm -hmm. is Sharon Schomburg, if you don't know. And Sharon is like one of the most um, decorated, award-winning quilters in of recent years. Mm -hmm. And um, Chrissy is just as lovely as her mother is. So Yes. Wonderful. Absolutely. So great class. She great lives class. in Arizona. And uh, she does travel for other shows. So see if right. you can catch her. Yes. And, and she owns 
Purple Daisies quilting. Right. And so you can get a lot of the stuff that she uses in class. But a lot of her techniques have to do with gluing. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to baste. And I know that sounds crazy weird, but take her class and you'll go, God, this makes sense. I think I'm going to do use that more than I've done in the past. Yeah. It can be easier to wrangle than pens, particularly if you've got really intricate seams coming together. Right. Because pens so. can sometimes cause unexpected bumps. I think I'm going to start using it more. Cool. So, anyway. So. And we are, wait, what are we doing with that again? Well, you're going to quilt it. I am. I'm going to quilt it. And then I think, assuming that she's still soliciting it, I think. I know. She may have changed the deal. Um, it will be donated to a good cause for auction, and we will let you guys know where that ends up. Right, right. <laughs> we thought we knew where we were donated, but I think the place that wanted it may be changing their mind on how they want things. So... I don't know. It may go to our guild. It may go elsewhere. Right. But we'll let you know if yes. there's a way for you to bid on it or it will go for auction. <gasps> Amazing. Amazing. So. So. Big Stitch Quilting. Big Stitch Quilting. Who, which I know nothing about. Thank you. And go. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> and we're done. So here's this where. This a short episode. We put in a link to Sarah Filkey's website and just play soft aquarium music for like the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this though. I am in the, well, I'm not in the middle of doing it like right now. Right, but I minute. have an active project that I am doing yes. big stitch quilting on. Uh, and the reason I'm doing big stitch quilting on it is because. You didn't I, want to do little stitch quilting. Because in order to earn <laughs> the golden thimble. Okay, so you got to know this about Pam, though. Pam is like, <laughs> if you give her a challenge, she's like, oh, I need the prize. So our guild. I like to have goals. Yes, she has goals. So, and I don't care. Like half the time I get in trouble with her because I don't show quilts at guild. And I don't care if I get the big the golden scissors. It's actually very tiny golden scissors. I know, but whereas I have all of my golden scissors like she's stitched she's to my got name tag. Serious so quilter like, bling going it, on. It jingles. Serious <laughs> quilter bling. So, but you like that. That's, yeah, so, and that's important to but you. But for additional context, you can earn tiny charms at yes. our guild for doing a quilt Over of a certain size, two hundred and eighty inches in perimeter. Right. If you mach if you do it entirely yourself, it, it has will to be done yourself. Right. It can't be you pieced it Can and somebody else. Talking? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go. Really? Yes, I'll drink really? my tea. Go. Okay. Really, really? <laughs> so if it's hand quilted, you get a golden thimble. If it's machine quilted by yourself, whether a long arm, domestic, whatever, you get a golden scissor. So I have a ton of golden scissors, but I don't have a golden thimble. She has tons. And I thought it had to be hand pieced too. So when I was working on this giant tulip pink English paper piecing, it was like, oh, because I need to hand hand stitch everything. No, it turns out I could have. They need to come up pieced. with the next level then. Machine quilted's golden scissors, hand quilted's golden thimble, and then you need something else, which I think it should be a machine if it's hand. Pieced and hand quilted. That would be good. Yeah, there you go. But then I would have to go make another stupid quilt and hand quilt it for Golden Thimble. <laughs> because if they give you a little machine, it'll be like, you could use this next time. Instead of... Thanks, guys. Yeah. So, uh, I my quilt that I am doing big stitch quilting on is the equivalent of a full-size quilt. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful and it's huge. And she complains about it all the time, but it'll be done and it'll be great. It'll be done in like five years. <laughs> it took me five years to piece the whole thing together. Did it's it really? Take... I've been working on that thing forever. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. I can't be... believe it'll be I hand pieced quilt. a quilt faster than you did. But I, I only worked on it like at baseball games and random kids' activities. I didn't I work only on worked it on mine at, at church. Bear in mind, I made like 200 other quilts while that one was going on. So, true. Who wants to talk smack now then? <laughs> I did mine in a year and a half and it took her five years. Just say it. And mine's key. Have fun hanging your hat on your one lonely hook. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're talking about big stitch. You're doing so, big stitch. Here's what I know about big stitch you have to have thicker thread than you're used to mm -hmm. using. And you need a bigger not a, a bigger needle that has a larger eye in it for yes. the bigger thread. Yes. And um, that's you do it by hand. 
you do it by hand. That's what I know. And now we're good. Is it, are you doing it to the piece? Uh, for me, yes. You don't have to. You can do like some nice echo work around shapes. To the piece means you're doing it about a quarter inch from the seam and you're just echoing the shape on the inside of it. Which is very common on a hand quilting technique, which is very common with English paper piece um, quilts. Stuff. Stuff. <laughs> like you see it really, you see it all the time when they did hexy quilts, like in the 1930s and stuff like that. Although, let me just say, English paper piecing has been around a, a few hundred years. So, right. Long time. So, the thread I like to use, I've seen embroidery thread used, but I like pearl cotton. And I think we've got some samples here. And these are ones I we pulled out of my kit. some samples here. Um, and I, I just kind of bought a variety pack. And in colors that worked, and they're all nice and variegated, and they look kind of cute. Yeah, I love this green variegated. That's yes, pretty. That is pretty. So that's what I tend to use. I hope I have enough to finish the quilt. I think I will, because I have like seven different balls total. And so what I did was just, I use the pink every time there's a big hexi, because in my design there's a diamond shape made out of six diamonds, and those are pieced to other diamonds with like a hexi in between. So the hexi always gets a variegated pink, and then I just pick the best color for the diamond star shapes. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, on the on the big needle, I think I use an, a chenille needle. Oh, I was gonna ask what needle it was. Chenille. I, I don't make sense. I don't think it has to be. I just like that because it's got a nice big it eye. It does. I know. They have. I mean, I don't remember all my needle types, but it's bigger than a Milner's. <laughs> you really, that was the only needle you went with? A straw needle? Milner's? A straw needle, Milner's. Well, traditional. Um, what's like the between, tweens? Betweens. The betweens? I hate those needles. Not the tiny 11-year-olds that come in. Oh, like, my gosh. <laughs> okay, now I'm not a big hand quilter, but a lot of... Hand quilters use those oh, betweens, yeah. which are these shortest stupid needles. Mm -hmm. And they load the stitches up. And they rock them, which means that you're putting the needle straight down into the quilt sandwich. Mm -hmm. And then underneath the quilt sandwich, you have your hand and you push the needle tip up to where it comes back up mm -hmm. through the quilt sandwich. And then they... So they do this. So they catch it with their thumb on the top and then rock it back down so that it, and it's called rocking a stitch, right? We would Which, demonstrate this live, but neither of us is good at it. <laughs> no, I stink at this. So that's what you get. This is what, yeah, it's like, it's like itsy bits. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it no, is no kind of. So, so that's what they do. And those little between needles are super short and they'll load up four or five stitches on them to rocking it before they pull it through and i'm like what you can't pull that well there are people who do it really well though and it is yeah. not me i think usually you're going for 12 to 16 stitches per inch in traditional hand quilting yeah but they don't do that all in one needle. oh right yeah, they go about yeah. a half inch about they, 11 to 12 is a really excellent yeah. stitch yeah now when i see quilts that I'm appraising, I'll actually, just out of curiosity, I'll actually take a ruler out and go, I wonder how many stitches per inch this is. And the ones that are done really fine are gorgeous. Yeah. Now, that's not the only way you can hand quilt. You can also do the, what they call stab stitching, which means you stab stick in, it down, come under, stab up, stab down, which is a lot more time-consuming mm -hmm. um, than rocking it, but I... I I, I want to be able to do that, but I just don't do it well. And I want to do it with a longer needle because it gives me more leverage. But those who do it well swear the little ones are the best. So I just haven't figured out how that works for me yet. So and it's not going to happen anytime soon, I'll be telling you. Big stitch is typically four to six stitches per inch. I started to say it's, it's like half. Like my, my stitches end up being between like... Three sixteenths, like just under a quarter of an inch. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, ideally, <laughs> sometimes they're bigger. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I. It's a great technique. I've heard this is really good for like you know meditation mm -hmm. and you know mindfulness. This is the kind of activity you may want to do if you're into mindful types of activities, where it's just it's repetitive. It's you know, I don't know that 
quilting a quilt is as easy a travel project. Oh, it's not. That's why. Because I... you've got a big quilt. I mean, I guess if you're doing a wall hanging or something, maybe that. But a big quilt, hand quilting, that's kind of hard to do just from a keeping it. Now, you quilt in a hoop, though, right? Not on a, you don't stretch it out on a. Yeah, I don't use a frame. frame. I have frame. the equivalent of a 12 inch hoop, I think. So I can fit one of the diamond motifs and two of the hexi motifs. So I can do both of those and then move it to the next spot. And my hoop in particular has um, kind of arms on it that, and there's a base that it's attached to. So there's a space of about six, eight inches where I can have one hand under, or, or a cat, because my cats have crawled in there while I'm stitching. And so I keep my left hand, because I'm left-handed, on top, and I keep my right hand underneath to help with the rocking motion. With the rocking. So mm -hmm. you do kind of do the rocking motion. Not well. Mostly yeah, because I, I pretty much hand quilt until my fingers hurt. Yeah. And then I stop. <laughs> but you don't use a thimble. I might now that I've picked up like the leather thimble, the little stick on kind, but at full thimbles just, they don't work for me. They just feel weird and foreign. And I put a thimble on a finger and as soon as I go to stitch, I my body's like, oh, something's wrong with that finger. So it moves to another one that doesn't have a thimble on it. And then I just <laughs> ruin that one. So <laughs> me and traditional thimbles don't really get along. <laughs> Um, but I have seen it done on big hoops. I have even taken a class on hoopless, actually, from Christy Fincher's mom, Sharon Chamber. Oh, really? I took a hoopless hand quilting. Uh, and that was kind of more about rocking the fabric than instead of rocking the needle. Oh, okay. Um, but it was using thicker thread, embroidery floss. It was a good class. Um, and I, I feel like, gosh, I should be able to do that. Um, but I find the hoop helps me, helps elevate the work, too, because it's got that eight inches. I can set it on my lap, and it's not... I have less fatigue on my upper body trying to, like, hold the entire full-size quilt up. Yeah, because I stitching. think the hoop that I got, when I took a hand quilting class, the hoop that I got was, like, I mean, it was huge. Mm -hmm. And you had to hold it, and I, it yeah, no. I don't know. Let me ask you this, though. Okay, so you're quilting, it's, what, full-size? Mm -hmm. Do you start with hand quilting? Do you start in the middle and work your way to the edge? Is there a, I mean, you're basting it just like you would normally baste, right. either pin or or thread, mm -hmm. I, would you spray baste a hand? I think that wouldn't stay well. I I don't, but I also don't like spray basting big quilts. I know Krista Watson does, and she does a lot of machine quilting. Um, but my fear is that eventually that glue would dissolve over time. I think so, too, as long as it takes you to do that. So do you have a technique where you start in the middle and work out, or how do you do that? Well, I did start in the middle, and then I just sort of started moving around the shapes, and it, it looks like I've kind of filled out a quarter of it so far. Mm hmm um, and then I'm like slowly moving my way around. Right. So, and just, and it's pin basted. Mine's pin basted, yeah. yeah. Mostly because I knew I needed to save all my thread for actually quilting it. <laughs> <laughs> True. Now, True. I will say sometimes there's accidental big stitch quilting. As like, in you're trying to do regular quilting yeah, and then you're and just, bad, just at like bad at it. Yeah. That would be me. Like I would be quilting big stitch. There's without. some of that in this quilt where I was like, I'm going to hand stitch it. Uh, and the stitches are a little bigger. I meant it to be like around the embroidered lemon. Yeah, but you know what? For me, just looking at that, I, I mean, you're telling me the story now. But just looking at that, I'm like, she meant to do it. Because it's consistent. Yeah. So I think if you be, if you're consistent... Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing, like there's not major big stitches and little stitches in the mid. I mean, as long as you're consistent, I'm going to go. Cool. Cool. She meant to do that. You know, if I were appraising it and people brought it to me, I was like, look, she did big stitch around here. And, of course, by the time you may not be there, it's I'd like go. Big stitch, little thread. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I don't think there's a problem with that. It's not the intended so, combo. But. And you know what big stitch quilting, I think, takes advantage of that maybe, like, regular hand quilting doesn't tend to is colored thread. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't see hand quilting quilts, especially older ones, in, like, a variety of colors in but their thread. It didn't it's have the, a variety of well, colors Well, true, back then. <laughs> but even now, yeah. people just use the whatever matches their background, and it's not... With big stitch quilting, you'll see much more vibrant vibrant colors, which I like. But I'm the kid who liked the, all the crayons in the crayon box, so not just... I'm the kid that kept my 64 box of crayons in color order. And in fact, I would get it from Crayola and be mad. I'm like, this is why is the gray one? next to the purple? That's not right. And I would take them all out and like reorganize them. 
See, I would take them all out and color each one so I could see what really color it was. Because it colors differently than what you're looking at sometimes. Cornflower Just... blue is a tricky, tricky color. Because it looks super dark on the crayon. You color it, you're like, it's so light. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I had to color each one. I don't know. So, anyway. There you go. There you go. But uh, definitely check out Fair Sarah Filkey's website. Okay. Um, and she's got some great instructional videos on her site as well, showing you know her actually doing it. And she is good and practiced and accomplished at it. She has a lot of amazing patterns that she does where she's enhanced her applique designs and her other quilt designs with, with the, the stitching. And I think with any quilt, what you get out of Big Stitch is accentuating the design, not detracting from it. Right. Which is different than, and this is probably a whole other topic, but Shashiko. Yes. Quilting, which is totally different. We'll have to do that different segment. So stay tuned for more. But not right now. But not right now. <laughs> now we're going to take a closer look at Lemonade, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about sampler quilts. This is a sampler quilt. It is a sampler quilt. It's they, amazing how that worked out, Lynn. It is. I wonder who <laughs> planned it. Huh. So sampler quilts, I think most people think of common size blocks. And There's 12 of them. <laughs> yep. There you go. And we're done. Um, <laughs> That's what I was going to, I mean, that was one of the things I put down with sampler quilts is normally it's consistent size blocks, mm -hmm. whether it's That's cute. And a lot of them <laughs> or a lot of the ones that I've been a part of are all 12 inch blocks. Yes. I think that's very common because a lot of sampler quilts are run as introduction programs for newer quilters. Well, that's how I learned how to quilt. Yeah. Sampler quilt. I did a block of the month at a local quilt store. And what I liked about sampler quilts then is that the block of the month program that I was a part of, they started with easy blocks, and then the next next month was a little bit harder, and then the next month was a little bit harder. And then you just learned, mm -hmm. you know, more intricate things to do and how to put those together. So for me, like, that's how I learned how to quilt was a sampler quilt. And I think that's how I teach the beginner class, mm -hmm. sampler quilt. Yeah. So... Honestly, they're not my favorite patterns, though. <laughs> yeah. I I have seen some sampler quilts that I really love, but they're ones that are the more advanced block construction techniques. There's more feathered stars. There's more intricate piecing. And they're combined with applique. And I think those are great. Yeah, but they're not beginner quilts. They are not. No. But, so, the, I mean, there's, as with any kind of quilt pattern, there is a range of skill that you can get into. And when I had done this one, it was like, well, A, lemons. <laughs> I like lemons. I and, actually do like and lemons then, a like, lot. At the time, I had seen that flying geese block in the um, upper left around the internet for a while. I'm like, I want to make one of those. And I'm like, hmm, just to randomly have a block. I'm like, I know, I could put it in a sampler with all of my lemon fabrics. And then I got a Lemoyne star mm -hmm. to see if I could do that. Um, and then I did some paper piecing of the little lemon wedge, and I did some embroidery. So it was you testing out different. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I put down here. It's great practice for different techniques. If you just want to try something new, mm -hmm. but you don't want to commit to a whole bunch of fabric or a king-size quilt <laughs> to learn how to make a Lemoyne star. If you just want to do it once, you know, I think a sampler quilt's a great idea. And a sampler size wall hanging, definitely. Well, <laughs> I think what makes this nice, too, is it's a sampler quilt, but it has the same theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lemons. You need a unifying something, whether right. it's consistent fabrics throughout the blocks or a consistent technique or, like, I just pick lemon A motif. Fabric. Yeah. Something Some that, that brings it together. It. No, right. but... Or... You could go the complete opposite and just scrap it up. But it like every, you can't have the same piece of fabric 
in more than one block. Well, then so, you give yourself different rules. Right. Like right? I've seen Bonnie Hunter do some amazing things where it's like different size blocks and different fabrics. And they're just things she's collected. Right. And she'll just slap them together and turn but it into they all the have blue in them somewhere. Or they all have. Not necessarily. Well, what I'm saying well, is be. you give yourself those kind of rules yeah. where like you're going to do this, but it's all going to have. Every one of your sampler blocks will have a blue. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the same blue. It doesn't have to be the same fabric, but it could have blue in it. And then that ties it all together kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think they're great practice, especially if you just want to do, like, can I do a, can I do a feathered block. star? Because yeah. those are hard. Like, those are one of the harder blocks to mm -hmm. really get right. Yeah. Because there's so many seams and... Tiny, tiny, tiny triangles. Tiny, tiny, triangles. <laughs> tiny triangles. I've done one, and I've done one. I I've did one. one. I turned it into a wall hanging, so I didn't have to do more. <laughs> I did one, and it's somewhere. I haven't yeah. done anything else with it. But they're also good. Sampler quilts are also good with orphan blocks. Yes. As you long know, as they work together. Well, bunny hunters, you just said. Go bananas. Go bananas. I mean, maybe the sashing or maybe the borders yeah. or... We'll pull it all together. But orphan blocks, you know, you had to make a quilt and you made three blocks extra or whatever. And those just kind of get put away in your stash or at least they do for me. They, I don't think they do for you because you put them on the back a lot of times, don't you? If you make a big quilt yeah. and you make too many blocks, you put them on the back. Or I'll convert it to a placemat and we'll donate that to Meals on Wheels. You know why I don't put them on the back? Because you don't finish any quilts? That's not true. That's not true. I do finish quilts. I finish quite a lot of quilts. You know why I don't put them in the back is because then I have to figure out the math to piece it in. Uh, you just slap some fabric on top and a little less fabric on the bottom, and then you cut a, cut a big old long seam in your quilt back and then just splice that little section in. Is that all you do, really? It's pretty much. You don't math it out? Oh, girl, no. How many fat quarters? Do I need three by four fat quarters to do this? Or I just, do I have? I like, I figure out how much I need for the back and I split it up into quarters and I make a four patch for the back. That's what I do. Nine times out of ten, my quilts have a four patch on a back. I pretty much take a length of fabric that I know is long enough for the lengthwise of the quilt and fabric comes like 42 inches wide. I'm like, all right, well, this quilt is 60 inches. So I'm probably going to need like a couple of fat quarters that coordinate that I'll piece in like. That's just as like a big strip in the back. And then like, eh, I need a little couple extra inches to so the backing's bigger than the front. And I've got, you know, random five inch by with the fabric strips or three and a half inch. I'm like, yeah, piece a couple of those together. <laughs> Slap it in there. Well, I want to do this quilt like you did, only I'm going to do it with oranges because orange is my favorite color and I like oranges. And I have orange fabric. Cool. Not just the color. I mean, I have fabric with oranges on them. Like well, lemons. But do you have cute sayings about oranges? I'm sure like, I do. Like, weren't you glad I didn't say banana? Because, <laughs> so the other thing, when I was, I was in a place of trying to be positive, and I was like, I'm going to put that Dale Carnegie quote in there. If life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And then I'm like, well, that feels disingenuous, knowing me. <laughs> so then I found a Liz Lemon quote from 30 Rock. that was like, well, I would roll my eyes at you right now, but... But my optometrist said that it uh, my eyeballs might spasm and fall out of my head. <laughs> that is what she put. That's exactly <laughs> what's in there. Yeah. So I embroidered both of those things just to, like, keep it balanced. So how many sampler quilts do you make, do you think? I used to do more when I participate in Block of the Month pro programs. And I don't really have time to do that anymore. Um, so that would be two to three a year. Really? Um I, I made not... one a couple of years ago because I started teaching a beginner's class, so I made the sample for the class, and I haven't made one since. Yeah, you have. Oh, yeah, I have. <gasps> Big I announcement have. coming up soon. <laughs> Our first online video class yes. is a sampler quilt. It's a sampler quilt, Amazing. and I have made that quilt. So many times. So many times. So many times. Like, so, because when you're filming it, you make it All more than what you think. All of the times. I ran out of fabric, and I think I had bolts <laughs> All, all of the samplers. All the samples. She really hates one of the blocks. Too I do. I, I, I haven't filmed it yet either. I, I know. I gotta. It. I gotta. I hate shoot that block. You that little thingy. Just of me show it to it. me today. We'll we'll talk after this filming. Okay. <laughs> 
It's going great, guys. Yes. Okay. So I think a great practice, though. Yes. And skill building. Great skill building. Like, and if you haven't made, you know, a block with flying geese in it, go get a sampler book. I promise you there will be a block in there with flying geese in it. Yep. Um, or half square triangles, quarter square. And they're just good knowledge to have in your tool belt that you want to then, you know, put into your own designs. Well, and I will say, so a lot of sampler quilts look very traditional, and there are modern quilters that are trying to build skills, and there are more modern sampler quilts out there. Tulip Pink has a great book, The City Sampler, okay, um, where it's, I think it's like 100 different blocks. I think they're six inch. Maybe I don't wrong. know. But you can make them bigger because um, you just, you know, double it and you get 12. Um, but there's a lot of really good modern sampler blocks out there, too. Right. That you can draw from. So you're not stuck with like, hmm, good, I saw a tooth star. I haven't seen that before. You know, yeah. you can jazz it up. A well, lot. I think a lot of basic sampler quilts, you know, 20 years ago were one block, sash it, one block, sash it. And that's just not as attractive to us in today's yeah. quilt world that it was. Not that they're not bad. I mean, there's still a place for those, but not, not something I do a whole lot. Our sampler quilt that we're coming out with is not like that no. at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, but that will be soon, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm still making it. <laughs> it's been made several times. I'm. I'm it's going to be an online class, so I'm filming it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to layouts, you talked about traditional ones. Some of the more creative layouts I've seen um, – taking the blocks and setting them on point and just using setting triangles. And that will take you from what's a lap size quilt to like a bed size quilt pretty quickly. Yes. Yes. Setting triangles. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, how do you feel about borders on sampler quilts? I love borders. I know. As a, a dumb just question. as a whole. Open I mean, that door. Let's, she walks right like, through it. let's talk. <laughs> I will put five borders on a quilt. No problem. And one of them or two of them will be pieced because that's fun. And then throw a checkerboard border on, and we got game. I love it. I love a good border. <laughs> I will make the inside bigger to make all my borders, like, work out better. Well, yeah. I what What is common in order to make that fit? So a lot of the traditional layouts I've done have been, you know, 12-inch blocks. You cut your sashing to two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. And then you, I use cornerstones when I do that because for me it's easier to line that up. Cornerstones are when you have like little tiny colored squares, not out of the sashing. They don't have to be colored, but well, uh, yeah. honestly, colored. A different fabric from the sashing. Cornerstones, even if it's the same mm -hmm. fabric, cornerstones help you piece it better because it lets you line things up and yes. you're not sewing a big long strip. And, and you don't have borders like... can be difficult to put on if you don't <laughs> yeah. play right. But once you get kind of that piece together and you know, I add cornerstones to like kind of the first border mm -hmm. and then you just add a second border of the same sashing fabric that then you can kind of like that's your wiggle room if you want a piece of border and you're like oh if I use six inch units and piece it I need to get 60 yeah. inches and you're like Ugh, it's only 55 like oh just add another border out of the background fabric or the sashing fabric yet. Oh, I Fixes love it right up. I When I'm designing an EQ8, I'll like add borders and then I'll look at how big it is and it's like 140 inches. I'll go. Okay. Reel it in. <laughs> Take a few of those out because they get big fast with borders. Mm -hmm. I think somebody quoted me, you can get to a king size really quick with a border. Add mm -hmm. a big border. All right. Anything else? I, I think we've covered all the basic stuff. I, li I like sampler quilts like this. Like, that's really super attractive to me. But I don't like all the kind of... And when I say I don't like them, they're not my favorite. I like quilts as a whole. But it's not something I make a whole lot anymore. But it's how I learned. It's how you learn. It's how you learn. It's great to learn. So... Do you sample quilt blocks like MC Hammer samples Rick James? You can't touch that. 
I knew that was going to get the production staff. <laughs> Y'all can leave a comment on the blog or on the YouTube episode or even in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by the Stitch TV Show Shop, your place for quilt patterns, the Stitch TV Show merchandise, and even laser cut applique kits. And we'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on your notifications on YouTube to know immediately when a new episode drops. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, September 14th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode, September 28th. And my podcast, Hip to be a Square, is out Fridays or Saturdays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise. Tune in next time with more Quilting Chat with Friends.